F5, the Dutch, one of the most terrible openings that you will face against D4. And in this video, I'm going to show you in under 10 minutes a simple and easy way to beat the Dutch. Just a quick reminder, please hit subscribe and check us out on Twitch and Discord as well. Let's begin with why the Dutch is so terrible. In contrast to every other opening, the Dutch does not help get any of Black's minor pieces out. For example, e6 helps the bishop get out. Knight f6 gets the knight out. g6 helps the bishop get out. f5 does none of that. In addition, the Black King is now drafty for the rest of the game. And what I want you to see with that is it's not like we have to mate the guy instantly, but for the rest of the game, even the late middle game, he will feel the consequences. He or she will feel the consequences of F5. So uh, let's talk a second about the dreams of Frederico the F pawn. With F5, the reason it's so popular is later black can get things going if white isn't so careful. And the dreams all have to do with the fact that if he can castle and put his rook on f8, that rook will have influence and be developed really in one move when he castles. Similarly, this bishop needs to be able to move through that square. And one of the first things to observe with that is that really we're not in a hurry to let that f pawn move. We don't need to play e4, for example. All right, there are many systems. I like this one, bishop g5. It is very simple. Now, um, let's go through some of the ideas. Um, really, we're going to make knight f6 difficult, but that's one of the moves you'll, you'll find. g6 is a move you'll face as well, and the provocative h6 is a move you'll see as well. So I'm just going to run through three variations, and you'll see that the setup I'm using is really the same. You'll need some creativity to work within that setup, but basically you'll have a sense of how to move against this opening. Let me show you a game I played not too uh, long ago against an IM. And um, let me show you a game I played not too long ago against an FM. And what's remarkable about this game to me is that my opponent really didn't do all that much wrong according to the computer when I checked later, but he soon found himself in a lost position. So knight c3, e3, h4. Now, first of all, this is the beginning of our setup. We put our pawns here and our knight here. Notice we're only making two pawn moves. That means the rest want to really be moves that are developing moves. So h4, I'm actually trying to get the rook involved. And if he let me play h5, I certainly would have done it. h6, snip, snip, bring out the queen. It's actually a very logical place for the lady. e6, knight e2. And let me stress, black in a lot of these variations we're going to look at can put the pawn on different squares other than d5, but we're still going to move forward with our general plan of development, which is usually going to be castling long and then trying to bust him open on the king side. g4. And already here, my opponent is in big, big trouble. Hard to give any advice. He wants to play e5, but I'm, I have a threat of my own. And now I play f4, and the game is already lost. Uh, I, could, I played queen e2, and I'm winning after that, but even simpler would be a move like queen g3 or even the rude queen g1. And simply black is lost because if he moves the bishop, this is happening to the poor guy. All right, so let me show you another variation. Knight f6. Now, let me just say, this setup that I'm showing you, you could use, really, if you, were a London, if you were an addict of the London setup, you could play bishop f4 and do a very similar setup. Part of the idea of bishop g5 is really just to be so annoying and not let him put his knight where it wants to go on f6, because now we get this beautiful position. And um, a way to understand, actually, how terrible this position is for black is if you compare, say, uh, this position here, this is called the Trumpowski. In this position, black is, has a tempo more 
then our position plus his pawns are moved up in our position to f5 and f6, which are, is not a healthy thing for the guy. And let me just run through. We're just going to do our setup, right? Bishop d3, queen f3, knight e2. Black could do different moves, but you get the drift. I, I could do different moves as well. h4 would be a fine move here, and I'm just playing to open the position for my rook. And uh, here, this was actually a position that Carlson had as white against Rajabov, and he played knight f4, which is fine. Uh, though I think just for the purposes of our analysis here, rook h3, we got to say, is a, just a huge and clear advantage where we have the better pieces, the better king, and this knight is dominated. All right, let's look at another variation. h6. Maybe the one tactical trick to appreciate is that g5 does not trap your bishop because after e3, we are threatening to mate the guy with queen h5. So, knight f6, bishop g3, knight c3, d6. Could have done d5 as well, but then the e5 square is weak. So there's drawbacks depending on where he puts his pieces. Um, white can do a number of things here. H4. This was actually a vote chess game that Chess Dojo played against a group called Chess Patzer UK, and we got a great position after g4, bishop c4. We could play h5 there as, there, there as well. Knight h5, knight e2. And the development advantage is so massive here. After c6, we continued to develop. And they shut us down with d5, but of course, that change in structure means that squares like this are weak. Now, just a general chess principle here. When you are ahead in time, you want to open the position. Or another way of saying it is the value of time increases as the position opens. So we decided we are certainly going to open it. We are investing time to open it, in fact. f3, castles e4, and they got to play this move, e6. Now, I'm going to leave you with this final position. In every game, in every opening you learn, rather, you need to play well after, after the opening, even if you get a beautiful position like this, where this position, this bishop is terrible, this knight has some work to do, the king is very, very drafty, as it is always in the Dutch. And here, we uh, were so arrogant that we castled long, and that allowed counterplay with b5. If instead we keep our wits about us and play a4, black is really in a spot where he doesn't have that many moves even to do. So I'm going to leave it there and just return, because this is the thing I want to stress most. When you play bishop g5, you are aiming for quick development with e3, and knight c3, and usually from there, you're going to figure out where the pieces want to go. Often, we're going to get the rook involved on h1 via unconventional means, and we're going to get the other rook involved, usually by castling long. Note that because the rooks are going to get involved like that, this bishop is kind of developed where it is and doesn't need to commit in any kind of hurry. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please subscribe to our channel.